Hello, Goranges are on view, and this time it's for our sale on the 14th of February. And I thought we'd have a mooch around the smalls, look at some Valentine's Day stuff, so it's probably too late for that, and maybe a bit of furniture later. So, kicking off with, this caught my eye, lot 1430, a miniature, a rather large miniature, but a miniature nonetheless, painted on ivory. Uh, looked to me to be sort of mid 19th century or thereabouts. Um, is there a trace of a signature there? I think that's just the lace work. But anyway, there we go. The child on the seashore. Uh, no inscriptions on the back to give us any further clues. It's lot 1430. It's in this rather nice all blue outer frame. It would have once had a rather good leather um, case, probably an enclosed case, but lot 1430. There we are. We'll start off with that. How about this then? Next to it, lot 1429. Rather smart. Um, look at the detail. It's gorgeous. Very nice. What's that um, made from? Well, I think that has got a gold overlay to it. I don't think we'd go quite so far as to say it's it's thick, solid gold, but there's definitely a gold overlay, probably over a bit of copper. Mm -hmm. um, on this nice Malacca shaft, lot 1429, you could just swagger down the street with that, looking very <laughs> impressive. It's got a good arm ferrule, so if anybody laughs at you, poke them. Uh, further on, modern Moorcroft uh, remains as popular as ever. This one is lot 1402. It's an Emma Besson design. I know this because it says Emma Besson on the back. Uh, from 2003, uh, there we go. Nice big thing with its original box as well. Nice touch. Uh, similarly, so there's another one, Wedgwood. Moorcroft, not Wedgwood, Moorcroft, there we are. All ramped up behind, uh, designed by Davenport by the looks of things. Lot 1400. With too. with its original box, yep, there we go. We've got some Edwardian clocks, that's quite a smart one there, lot 19, 1398 rather, a um, bit of marquetry in later, the mahogany, slight sort of Art Nouveau feel to it. Over here, post boxes, the chap that brought this in was very hopeful it was a period one, uh, and I had to point out, no, sadly it's not, um, but it's a lovely bit of wood, this very thick burr wood. Uh, again, the Victorians wouldn't really have used that sort of timber, they'd have used mahogany or something a little bit plainer, less fancy, and they wouldn't have made it out of the solid, thick timber, which this has been done with. So this is in the manner of a Victorian one, but you know, the real thing would be three, four thousand pounds. This one I think is going at three to four hundred, lot 1393. Squeezing by you, excuse me. How about a little ship's compass? It's rather diddy, isn't it? Lot 1391 in brass. It's lost its loop handle though, that sets it back a bit. Next to it, we're still in instruments, a barograph. Turn it round the right way. There we are in walnut. I suppose that's, well, they don't change a lot over the years, probably about 1910 to 20 or so, uh, with its base drawer, which is a popular feature just to put the um, chart papers in. And um, the idea is, you know, you stick it, you stick the paper on and it records the uh, atmospheric pressure over time and you can look at it and see how it's been been going. Lot 1388, still quite popular those. I think, you know, they can make around about sort of three to five hundred for that sort of model. Um, ever popular, probably ever, ever, ever known. These another rather nice big owl lamp base, had an oil lamp fitting at one time, had some floral encrusting, which has had a bit of a bash over the years. We've got an English registration mark to the underside, telling us that it is English porcelain rather than something continental. Um, well, little bits falling off it here. Oh, what was that? Good grief. He's, got, he's <laughs> lost an eye. He's got a loose eye, I'd like to point out. Not anymore, repaired. Uh, lot 1386, yeah, there we go. Uh, what else can I find? Let's go around here and go over this way. A bit of Liberty Putrick. Um, some nice shades. We had some of these sort of Vaseline shades in the sale on Monday. One lot did particularly well, um, but uh, others were still proved to be rather popular. Beswick here, the Beatrix Potter characters, the brown label ones. These are Royal Albert. I wonder if we've got some Beswick too. Yes, we have. Bit of a mixture of uh, those Beatrix Potter figures. Cracking tea set down here. Look at this. This is a very ornate pattern isn't it? Lot 1362. That's unmarked so we're not holding out much hope for getting marks on anything else because typically it's, if the dishes aren't done then that's it but there we go rather smart looking um, I suppose 1870 or thereabouts uh, lot number 1362 as I said before big showy tea set with the coffee cans which is unusual because these coffee cans I suppose come in near in 1900 so perhaps we're looking more sort of towards the end of the century um, given that those appear because they're, they're 
There they are. Anyway, uh, what else can I find to show you? Uh, there's a few interesting pictures in the sale, and we haven't done pictures for a while. Here, nicely presented, look, George John Pinwell. Sort of sketchy watercolour there. Um, difficult with the light. Difficult with the light. There you go, thank you. Yep. There we go. There's Pinwell. That's not 1564. Uh, I don't know the estimate offhand, but it will appear magically on our uh, email to you. Uh, up here, we had a John McWorker on McWurter on Monday of Genoa Harbour that did very well. Made about eight nine hundred pounds. This is a uh, Kyle Lock, um, but still in very nice condition. More modestly sized. I think we're saying about two to three hundred, but it might go on and. If McWhirter has suddenly become in vogue, or perhaps it was Genoa Harbour that drove the interest last time. Um, over the back here, um, Valentine's Day. Well, the sale's on Valentine's Day, so you're a bit blooming late if you're trying to buy something for your Valentine. But uh, had a rummage in the jewellery just to see what we've got here. There's some rather chunky, stylish pieces such as that. This is lapis lazuli with diamonds and gold, lot 1877, estimate three to four hundred pounds. That's pretty showy. Got something a bit less showy, but rather sort of smart and elegant. This is 18 karat white gold, lot 1881, set with diamonds, uh, in quite a sort of contemporary style, estimate four to six hundred. Something old school, a lovely heart locket there, gem set. A little bit worn to the pendant, no surprise, lot 1921, about £100 plus estimate on that. Is it open? Uh, does it open? No, it's sealed. It's just, it. Hang, there's hair in the back. Look, there's a lovely hair oh, plate right. to the back. And Roger did tell me what that was, but I can't remember. He has identified the stone. Um, it's just a pretty little lovely hmm. thing that you hang as a memorial, I suppose. Yeah. Lot 1908 is, a, instead of sapphire, we've got amethyst set there, a three stone ring with diamonds. Uh, it'd be 18 carat setting. Modest estimate, sort of 120 to 180. Something a bit more showy, rather jazzy double clip brooch there. So that comes apart and can be, you can wear it as a single brooch or you can clip one onto each lapel. Again, 18 karat gold, diamond set. Roger thinks the rubies are probably synthetic rubies, uh, but still that's a good showy blingy thing. It's It's got a sort of, I suppose, 50s, late 40s, 50s look to it. It's lot 1960, estimate five to 700. And then rounding off jewelry, 1958, just a plain pair of studs, little diamond studs, claw set, estimate two to 300 in a box. And why not a watch? Very good value at auction, the ladies' watches, uh, if, if the style suits. That's a long jean. It's in 18 karat gold. Uh, I think it's a quartz movement, so it uh, should be fairly straightforward to get going, but hasn't been tested. Lot 1931. And again, modest estimate, 100 to 150. But if you're trying to give a message on Valentine's Day, <laughs> I thought we could dig out some silver. And if, if you, I don't know... You shouldn't know your Valentine anyway, they shouldn't know you, but you can put a little note in with the present. So we could, you could go for, how about a vinaigrette, lot 1812. Lovely little vinaigrette, that. Look, floral, chased on it. You open it up, it's got the original grill. It's got, has it got a sponge? Bear with me, viewers. Yep, look, there's a nice old bit of sponge in there. And uh, that'll be sort of 1830, 1840. Roger will have dated it, put the maker. And what does that, well, what were they for? They were, if you walked out in the streets and they were a bit smelly, you could waft that under your nose. So uh, you give that to your loved one. And it sort of and says, tell her you, and tell her, uh, and tell her you smell. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, there we go. That's no. nice. You smell lovely, maybe. That's, that's the message. You smell lovely. <laughs> How about 1804, if not uh, that? If you don't like that, uh, you could buy her this lovely silver desk ruler. It's in inches. Um, you can sort of say, you know, my... My love for you is is measureless, or actually it is measured in inches, 12 of them, but you've got a, you would have had a pen or wax and something else at each end. The sliders are still there with these cabochons. That is lot 1804. Or you could say, I hold a candle to you, for you. You look better in the dark. I don't know, lot 1807. <laughs> This is a George the Third chamber stick. I don't think that's really going to go down too well as a Valentine's present, except no. for the fact that they could bring it into Goranges and flog it, get the money and dump you. But they're 1807. Nice, um, nice chamber stick, that, 1807. So, OK, maybe you don't hold a candle to her. Maybe you could say, you like sweets a lot, love. Um, lot 1864. These are Boggiali, and they are... Um, there we go, look, they're just sort of little sweet, sweetie ornaments with um, Ambrosoli inscribed upon them. 
and they're, they're with their certificates and everything. So there we go. You could say you you you, you like sweets, or or you could say you're a wise old bird. <laughs> And by lot like 1858, yeah. and the, the eyes are red. I mean, I don't think those are the original eyes, but um, but perhaps that's quite sort of appropriate for Valentine. And this has been drilled as a, or modeled as a um, pepperette. Again, Rog will have put all the details of the dating and everything on it. But quite a nice little owl. Owl's always popular. Nice. Uh, or finally, you could say, you're a bit of an elephant, my darling. Um, <laughs> lot 1853. And, what about, uh, I'll never forget you? I'll never forget you, or I'll always remember. <laughs> Uh, lot 1853, nice little Edwardian or thereabouts elephant pin cushion. So there we go, some wonderful tips from me. You always know who to come to. So there we go, that's that. There's a quick look round at a few more pictures because we have neglected the picture section of late. And so uh, what have we got? Elizabeth Blackadder, big name, limited edition print there, lot 1587. I drift by this nice little pink galley style cat, French pottery. <laughs> Did once have glass inset eyes. It's obviously the week for eyes falling out. Lot 1254, that one. This is Philip Hugh Padwick, painted a lot around Sussex. Um, although I've got a feeling that was not a Sussex subject, but anyway, nice oil there, lot 1588. Padwick again being more typically countryside and it was really quite sketchy usually. Oil again, lot 1589. Um, this catches my eye, lot 1259. Whether that's meant to be George Bernard Shaw or, or whatever. Oh, it's just composition. It's one of those things that sort of looks better than it is if you follow. Um, anyway, 1259 uh, might still appeal to you. Carrying on down the Thomas Rowlandson etching there of an aeronaut published, I'm told, just before the first balloon ascent uh, in with another sort of satirical type print. Won't be much money, though. It's about 1591, 50 quid or something like that. Uh, oh, how about these? These are um, 1594. Um, Chris Beetles, good, the best dealer, I suppose, in the top dealer in illustrated works. Uh, this is Susan Herbert, the artist. And there was clearly an exhibition where she painted pictures based on pre-Raphaelite or Victorian paintings. So this one is The Blind Girl After Millet. It's got the uh, original label on the back. And there are a few more of those in the sale, such as this one, 1596. Same artist. It's a far, far better thing is the title on that. So uh, if cats and Victorian pictures are your thing, then that works very well. Nice Charles Bentley there. That's um, Albra Point from memory. Is it? No, it's not. It's um, Northumberland. Bamber Point. There we go. Bamber Point. Charles Bentley. Um, not bad condition, that watercolour. Colour's still good. And then on the back, nice remnant of the artist's label. Sort of thing we always like to see. That was 1595. This catches my eye. 1266. Sort of Pearson style. Or probably could be Pearson, but if it's not signed, it's not Pearson, technically. Um, nice chamber stick. Another chamber stick there. Um, there we go. That's 1266. Oh, and samplers. Talk about samplers every now and then. This lot, I like the look of this, lot 1290. That's just a little bit more unusual than um, the norm. So uh, we've got this rather nice, fine little um, needlepoint. And then this, this Cupid with the bow. Oh, what more could you want for Valentine's Day? There we go. And with it, you would get another one that's not quite so fine, but still got some charm to it and got a nice little verse and doesn't have an alphabet for a change. Found anchor up there, which is interesting. So, um, Plenty of options, plenty of interesting things in the sale. Black Labrador pictures, lot 1599. Uh, I could just go on forever, as usual. There's so much nice, interesting stuff here. Lots of furniture in the warehouse, well worth having a look at. Have a look at the website, go through. Also, a good selection of carpets and rugs this time, including some more contemporary keliums as well as the traditional sort of Persian things. So, have a good look at all of that. Uh, last week for consigning for the fine sales this week. So, if you're still thinking, act now or forever be disappointed until the following one. Um, and I think that's about it, really. So, uh, there we go. Remember. Um, don't forget Valentine's Day and uh, I'll look forward to seeing you at the sale on the 14th. Thank you.